Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, Glory. and the house of Jacob their sins. Mm -hmm. Yet they seek me daily, mm. and delight to know thy ways. As a nation that did righteousness, and forsook, forsook not the ordinance of their God, mm -hmm. they ask of me the ordinance of justice. They make delight in approaching to God. Mm -hmm. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. Mm -hmm. Wherefore have we, have we afflicted our soul, mm -hmm. and thou takest no knowledge. All right. Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Uh-huh. Read four. Behold, ye fast for, for strife and debate, mm. and to smite mm. with the fist of wickedness. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, mm -hmm. to make your voice to be heard on high. To make your voice to be heard on high. Now, we thank the Lord tonight for the reading and hearing of his word tonight. We're going to focus in on the first verse. Cry loud. And spare not. Amen. Now, the writing that we're reading tonight, these are this is not Ella Hill's doctrine. Amen. But we're reading this out of the word of God tonight. And it first says, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Amen. Cry out. Show my people their transgressions. In the house of Jacob, their sins. And again, we thank the Lord for the reading and hearing of the word tonight. And I'm not going to be long. I'm actually winding down because I believe the Lord, amen, has said what he's mostly going to say tonight. Amen. But the Lord wants us to hear what he's saying, that there is a job. That the preacher is supposed to be doing in the house of God. I'm not supposed to be going along with your room. Somebody say amen. I'm not supposed to be going along with anything in the house of God. I'm not supposed to be letting everything go like we see in the house of God. Everything in the church is okay to do. As long as you put Jesus' name with it, you can do what you want to do. Even if you want to shake your behind the wrong way, you can still do that and be saved. But I heard Isaiah say, cry loud and spare not. Y'all see that? Sometimes people say the preacher ain't, ain't for, you supposed to be merciful. You spare not. What does that mean? We, we ain't supposed to be lying girlfriend and boyfriend over here. Amen. Oh, it's better that you get married. I'm not going to spare no preachers either. They ain't off the limits. I don't care that they got, I don't care what title they got. Did the Lord say, Spare, what do they say? Not. That go for everybody. It don't matter what's in front of your name. Doctor, apostle, rabbi, prophet, master. It don't matter. Whatever you put in front of your name. I heard the word say, spare not. And you know what? That's what's wrong with us. That's why we didn't got a little weak like we didn't got. Y'all know what's wrong with a lot of us? Because we didn't fellowship with the wrong church. Whoa! Yes, we have. We didn't fellowship on the wrong side of holiness. We didn't fellowship in the wrong holiness church. And then got a hold of the wrong spirit. And then got a hold of the wrong thing in the house of God. That's why now folk is trying to be sexy in the house of God and not sanctified. That's why the brothers are trying to be fine and cute and not holy because we done spared feelings. Let the young people alone. Ain't nothing wrong. Look here. Leave them young folk alone over there. Let them do what they work out their own salvation. The devil is a lie. You young folk need instructions because they're going to meet destruction. They need instructions. 
Because they're going to find destruction without instructions. Amen. It says, spare not. I'm not supposed to spare nobody. I'm not supposed to spare nobody. Well, that's a preacher, Pastor. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be looking. If he got, if he, if he in the closet with somebody, he ain't supposed to be in the closet with. I see the word. It said, cry aloud. Spare not, amen. If he's a homosexual, then he's a homosexual. Yes, Lord. It's tight, but it's right. If you take a look, it's still in God's book, amen. You got to stay with what's in the word and let the God, he'll heal your body. He'll save you, but you got to stay in the word of God. Spare not. Lift up that voice as a trumpet. I ain't going to be in a corner. Well, just, you know, you're just supposed to let the ministers know. It ain't just for the ministers to know what's wrong in the church. If he a homosexual, everybody's supposed to know. Brother, stand up and tell, tell what you done done. Oh, glory to God. Cry loud and spare not. We ain't supposed to be sparing these little mannish women. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Trying to got an old raggedy, rough, rash, hard voice. Like, Praise the Lord, everybody. Don't even hardly sound like a woman. Or the sound. Because she been, oh, I got to say, she been butching all her life. Amen. Trying to be a man. Sound like, Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's some little mannish women. That's why many of them, amen. Oh, Amen. That's why a lot of them, amen, they trying to be pastors because many of them got a man's spirit in them and they like women. I ain't saying all of them, but it's a bunch of them like that. Amen. It's a bunch of women that like women, amen. And do you know what's sad? What's sad is we supposed to be able to, if you're supposed to be honest, if he wrong and she wrong, it's time to move on. I wouldn't stay somewhere where that man is wrong or that woman is wrong. If he funny and she ain't, if, and she funny, it's time to find somewhere else to go. Cry loud. Let everybody know, hey, look here, man, look. Cry loud. We ain't supposed to be having no secrets. Cry loud. What's the secrets in the church for? Cry loud. Oh, God don't want no, he don't want no secrets in his house. No, he don't want nothing hid. He don't want nothing swept under the rug. His preacher's in the closet. His first lady's in the closet. His family is in the closet. It's time to cry loud and spare not show my people their transgressions. We ain't supposed to be having no secrets over here. You know what's sad? People can be sick and folk don't even know it in the church. Like there's something wrong, we're getting sick. Say, cry loud. Spare not. Amen. Some preachers like picking up prostitutes. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord. And many of them can preach real good. And like to go to the whole house. They'll preach you a good sermon. Ha! They'll have you on your feet. Ha! They'll tell you, oh, catch him with somebody. Catch him with your neighbor and look at your neighbor and say, when I come out, you coming out with me. Somebody say, yay! No, it's time to cry loud. He preachers don't mind you dating now. We let everything go. It was a day and time we didn't tell young folk it was okay for them to date. I don't see nowhere in the world of God when you turn 18, you can begin to date. All I read is the Lord say, be ye holy. Anybody see an age on there? For I, the Lord your God, am holy. Do anybody see an age on there? Thank you, priest. Thank you. Out of the mouth of babes. Amen. And don't you know that we're we supposed to be firm in what we teach? Brothers and sisters, we're supposed to be getting divine teaching in the house of God. Amen. That's right. The body of Christ is a body of baptized believers. Amen. 
We're not supposed to be. Look here. This is not. Uh oh, watch this. This ain't no Mason meeting. Whoa. What did I just say? Come on, you down low Masons. It's time to crawl out and spare not. You can't be no Mason and walk with Jesus. You can't be no Mason on the down low. Because the Holy Ghost is digging up everything that ain't like God. If it ain't like God, the Lord, the Holy Ghost is going to search that thing out. One thing I found out, the devil can sing. He can preach. He can shout. He can prophesy. But that rascal is what he is. One thing he can't do, he can't live holy. Cry loud. Spare not. I'm not supposed to spare. Not, I'm not supposed to spare my wife if she wrong. Woo What did I just say? How many henpeck pastors can't tell a first lady, wife, you ain't right tonight? Oh, cause Jezebel is running the house. She pushy. She's she's in control. She can't be subject. She got to be in control. I, Ahab, I, she, she looked out and saw she wanted somebody else real estate and, and, would, and, and was ready to kill and shed blood to take somebody else's land. That's how Jezebel is. She want what somebody else got. That woman, you can't, she ain't subject to God. She ain't subject to the word of God. She came to the table with her own prophets. Yes, she did. She had 400 prophets that sat with her. She brought her own prophet. That woman was pushy. Amen. She'll tear your choir up. Now I'm going to fix that thing getting better. She'll tear your church up. Yes, she will. Pastor can say something one day, come back the next day. Well, there's been a change. Called Jezebel and spoke. Amen. All of a sudden, you see this, I shout in church now. Amen. Amen. Stuff you used to not see in the house of God. You used to not see women in pants. Come on, say amen. Amen. I mean, if it was one thing we were going to do, we were going to wear a dress to church. Come on, say amen. We came to church, we were going to wear a dress. But Lord, have mercy. Even when we went to funerals, we put on a dress. But these women coming to funerals with shorts on now. Lord, help tonight. It's time to cry loud and spare not. I'm not supposed to spare my wife. Even if my wife, she wrong, I'm supposed to tell her. If I'm wrong, she's supposed to tell me. Don't y'all know that go both ways? How am I going to be up here preaching to you and I'm in a motel the the next day? What did I just say? I'm preaching to her, but I got a motel life on the side. I got a side life at the motel. Oh, help me tonight. See, you can't mess with God's work and then think you're going to be all right. I always hear them old folks say, don't you play with God. It's better that you go away and go play with something else. Play Hot Wheels car. Play G.I. Joe. Play Lone Ranger. But don't play, don't play with God. Amen. Amen. Cry loud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a, look at that, like a trumpet. You know how many secrets really, if people really knew how many secrets was in their church. Folk end up, then they got divorced in church, come a new wife. Old wife still sitting there. It say spare not, didn't it? Now I read in the word where the Lord forgave a bill of divorcement. Amen? Anybody read that? He did that. Moses gave a bill of divorcement. Well, well, hold on, stop right there. But it didn't give us the okay to go get another one. Amen. Amen. See that? The Lord is even willing to, even willing to reason with us, even say the marriage didn't work, that we divorce. That's guess what? We all right with the Lord. But the Lord just say, now go back to the car lot and get you another one. He didn't say that. But you see these same preachers that perform the witness. Here they are, they done married somebody else. And everybody's still sitting in the church. Nobody got sat down. 
Now, there's got to be a reason for don't stay together. Amen? You know what I say? Somebody, especially happening in the house of God, somebody wouldn't say. Come on, say amen. A, a, a saved marriage don't break up without somebody departing from the faith. Amen. Sometimes it is better to just go ahead and divorce. Especially if they're trying to stop you from living saved. Amen. I'm not encouraging nobody to divorce, but this is what I'm saying. Jesus said, if your eye offend you, what did he say? Pluck it out. That's what he said. He said, better that you enter into life with one eye than to enter into hell fire with your, in, the, in hell fire, body and soul. Amen. And we marrying, letting all these folk marry. It's a spare night. You remarrying, you can't stay in the choir. You need to sit down. Amen. See, some folk backslide and then want to come back to the church. You ever seen somebody do that? Backslide to go get something in the world and then think they can come back to the church with it. You try to bring that new wife over here to the old landmark, you're going to sit your, you're going to sit down. Amen. Well, we, we, it's, we're supposed to forgive. We do forgive you, but you're going to sit down. Amen. You know why? You ain't supposed to go back and backslide knowing what's in the word of God and then think you can, because we're supposed to be the husband of one wife. Just because you backslid. Well, I did that when I wasn't saved, and you're going to pay for it. See, what people don't understand, the Lord forgive us. But you're going to pay for it. You're going to reap. Amen. How can you say you saved and you done went off and now you done put yourself in adultery? That's what it is. And the Lord Jesus said it's adultery. If a man shall put away one wife and he marry another, he committed adultery. And if anyone marry that wife that he put away, they commit adultery. Do you know, do you know can I share something with you that are what a lot of folk don't know? Do you know that it don't matter if you've never been married before? Do you know the person who get married the first time, marry somebody who's been married before, still got living wives? Do you know somebody, one person can't be in fornication, the other person be in adultery? It don't work like that. Can I tell you what the word says? You're no longer twain, but it says you're one. Guess what that means? That union of marriage is adultery. That can be your first time marrying somebody. If she had another husband that's living and you marry her, both of y'all are in adultery now. You can't have one person in adultery. See, see, this is the reason why when they brought that woman to Jesus, and they say, Lord, we caught her in the very act of adultery. Why didn't they bring that man with her? They should have also, don't, it take two to commit adultery. Not one. It take two. God's word ain't divided. But you know what we'll do? We'll divide up God's word. You in adultery. Well, he is too. Jesus said, he that joined himself to a harlot, he said it's one flesh. What does that mean? You join yourself to an adulteress, you're an adulterer. Because when marriage, you're no longer twain. You're one. One can't be an adultery and one be in fornication. You're no longer twain. That union is one. Amen. That's what a lot of folks say. But I've never been married. Well, you just married somebody that's been married. Now both of you are in adultery. They should have brought that woman with them. Uh, we caught her in the very act. Where the brother at? It take two. It take two to commit fornication. It take two to commit adultery. Amen. All this marrying we doing in church now. And then, amen. Marrying and giving in marriage. And the preacher is okay with it. He's still smiling. But them ties is good. 
He's smiling over the tide. Oh, I tell you, y'all know God is good. He's a good God. Oh, I tell you, he's a good God. He been good to me. That's how he's looking at them tired. Done so much for me. I just can't tell it all. That's all he's looking at is tired money. You know what I learned? This preacher here can be a gambler. As long as he pays his tithe, he can keep his seat. He can beat his wife. As long as he pays his tithe, he can keep his seat. He can cheat on his wife. As long as he pays his tithe, he can keep his seat. This one here can got, got other children and another. And another s- Do y'all know preachers are having children with other women in church? He never, leaves, he never loses his place in the ministry. As long as he's paying his tithes and giving offering. Saying, that's right, bishop. That's right, pastor. Preach apostle. As long as he do that. As long as he stay agreeable with ministry. Giving all that money. He ain't got to lose his seat. Going having children everywhere. Everywhere the church go, he's making children. Y'all notice what's happening. Every city they find, he got children there. He's a little young lady. He got little sweeties in every city. And ain't nobody, somebody know it. But somebody won't say nothing. But what does it say? Cry loud. Spare not. Ain't supposed to be no secrets. I ain't supposed to have no double life. You're supposed to see me for what I am. Do you know how I used to let folk down for if somebody, to, if, if somebody find out, you know, Pastor, you know Pastor Hill. Y'all know he really, he went on, on, off service night. Do y'all know he in some other town? Got a whole other family. Boy, they would let folk down. Amen. But do y'all know this really happening? His preachers got families in other cities. And somebody in the church know it. But somebody like they see in the church. Amen, Pastor. I tell you, he's a man. And then stand up and, and, and church, have leading the people. I tell you, he's a man of God. I tell you, this is a, we ought to, look here, we ought to do right by our leaders. We ought to do, and somebody know he ain't no good. But these little ministers, they'll back him up because they like their seat. You know what some people just like? Being out front. You know what I want? I want to be holy. Because hell going to, look here, hell is for everybody that want to be out front. Hell is for everybody that want to hold secrets. We ain't supposed, y'all know we ain't supposed to be no secrets here? It ain't supposed to be, it, look, it ain't no secret. Ain't nothing going on that here that you don't know about. Ain't nothing going on. Amen. I ain't, I ain't getting locked up and put in jail. And showing up for church service on service nights. Amen. I'm not supposed, I can't live no double life. But the word said we're supposed to cry loud. Spare not. That means not one soul we can spare. That means I can't have favorites. I can't have favorites. I can't have respect the person. You know what the word say? He that have respect the person commit sin. Y'all know preachers do that. No, y'all, I, it's sad. I didn't know they didn't like shaking hands with people. They don't want to shake hands. They teach you you ain't supposed to shake the preacher's hand. What's wrong with us? You mean he's so holy I can't shake his hand? What kind of man is that? Well, if he, if I can't shake his hand, you know what? I don't want to shake his hand. You know what I say? Brother, I pray for you. Something wrong with you. Because if we can't shake hands and be cordial and be, and be like brothers and sisters, everybody in here ought to have a friendly spirit about them. You come to me, I ain't supposed to do you like this. Praise the Lord. Have you ever seen people, you try to shake their hand, they turn from you? How you doing? Go somewhere. I tell you, man, I can. Ain't that sad? 
Oh, it said, cry loud and spare not. We ain't supposed to be this way and be holy. That's why, that's why that church is like it is now. Y'all know COVID is becoming a lot of churches. People, are, I don't care what they say, they can call themselves Church of God in Christ, they can call themselves Full God, they can call themselves Baptist, they can call themselves Method, they can call themselves whatever they want to. If you bring in COVID into the church, you need to change your name. And put COVID, whatever that, whatever your name is, add COVID to it. Amen. Because you done become the COVID church. And do y'all hear them saying, now worship is not going to be the same as it was before. What's wrong with you trying to tell me worship has changed? Oh, wait a minute. We're bringing COVID into the church. And the word Jesus said, that the true worshipers of God. I don't read COVID nowhere in that, do you? The true worshipers of God. Whoa, glory to his name. I thank God for true worshipers of God. Who's going to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. I don't read COVID nowhere in God's word is COVID found. Why are we bringing it to the house of God? I thank God that we got to cry loud against this. We got to cry out against this. This is not the move of God. God does not, amen, is not telling his church to follow after COVID guidelines. But the Lord said, amen, that the word, Jesus said that, amen, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. COVID virus don't mean nothing in the word of God. Lord, help us tonight. We got to cry loud. We got to tell somebody Amen. this ain't right. And you know what? You can look at folks and say, you know it ain't right. But you're going along with it. People know it ain't right, but they're going along with it. Have you ever known, have you ever gotten in a car with somebody that was driving? And they say, well, we're going to such and such place. And, and we all know where we're going. And we know the way. But all of a sudden, we're not going the way that, so when you ride with somebody and they ain't going the way that we say we, you know, to the place we were going, wouldn't you even ask, hey, uh, where are we going? Oh, glory. Well, where are we going? See, COVID ain't the way to heaven. Y'all hear what I said? COVID-19 is not the way to heaven. Neither should we follow the guidelines and procedures in the house of God. No, we should not be closing our doors. Our doors ought to be open. Y'all know the jig house is open. Bootleg house is open. They're getting their liquor, they're getting their drugs. And we're going to close the door. But we got to cry loud against this. You can look at folks and say, you know this ain't right. Since when we saw the power of God move? You know what? We didn't got like them folks in the children of Israel. We didn't got out there in the wilderness. Oh, is what we done done. We didn't got out in the wilderness. Y'all know them same folk that saw God part the sea died in the, red, in the wilderness? They saw God part the Red Sea but die in the wilderness for unbelief. You know what? People don't believe it. Take all this. I'll be all right at home. I'll be okay. That's not no way to be saved. If it took it back then, it must so take it now. Amen. And that's why I'm glad tonight Y'all, the unction of the Holy Ghost in me said, no, something down inside of me telling me to go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Amen. I heard the Lord say something down inside of me telling me to go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We can't stop. We must march on. You know the world need the church. The world need us. They need us. They need somewhere to go. 
Somebody need deliverance. It's important that these doors stay open. That's why my prayer, Lord, bless us to get here to keep these doors open. Because somebody, one of these Friday nights, is going to walk in here crying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? We got the crowd against this. The Lord didn't say show my people their transgressions for us to sit there and let everything go in the house of God. Sisters got their legs crossed with their skirt up their knees. Got the nerve to cross their legs with a split in it. Got a split in their dress. Dress way up over their knees and they crossing their legs at church. Amen. Some of this stuff in church now, the dresses done got tighter, the dresses done got shorter, and the brother's pants done got tighter, the britches done got tighter. Amen. We spoke this. He said, show my people. Go back and look at the old church. You don't see this stuff you see now. Amen. You don't see the. He said, show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob, the church, their sin. Amen. We supposed to be standing in the old way is what we supposed to be doing. Showing the people of God. Hey, guess what? We got to go back to the old time way. This new salvation ain't delivering. I watched the preacher just all to call, just walking around doing it. Yeah. Woo. Just walked around at all to call. I said, what did he celebrate? He ain't laid hands on nobody. What are he pumping his fist for? He ain't laid hands on nobody. I'm sure he was getting happy thinking about that. Oh, money is coming soon. I'm going to have that service. It's, whoo, I ain't but a couple weeks away. Yeah. Thinking about his money. Amen. Oh, no, it says spare not. Spare not. Anybody read that? I'm not. That's why. uh Uh-oh. And I'm getting ready to stop. Watch this. I don't care how close we are. Hear me tonight. I don't care how close we are. I don't care how friendly we are. We ain't supposed to be letting the word of God. Letting folk do whatever they want to do just so we keep friendship. If you my friend, tell me what's wrong. If you my friend, tell me the truth. I'd rather you tell me the truth and I find out and say, oh me, Lord, you won't find me no more. Amen. I'd rather say, oh, me, when the word find, if the word find me. I don't want, look, I don't want to be going on and, and I'm doing something wrong. And then, do y'all know a lot of preachers know they wrong? But they keeping friendships and fellowships alive. Amen. He, he one of the cheatingest preachers in America. And we fellowshipping with him. Ain't that sad? And why is that never forget this brother was really trying to fellowship with us? The Lord said, no, don't fellowship with him. You know what I told the brother? I said, brother, I said, well, I'll be praying about it. Yeah, brother, let me know. I tell you what, because I tell you, I, let's get together. Let's get together. Let's get together. And I'm so glad I kept following the leading of the Lord. That brother was living a double life. They found him in the motel dead. Oh, Lord. Amen. And you know what? Uh, I, you know what I say? Now, how come somebody else can fellowship with him that say they have the Holy Ghost? How can you say you got the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost tuned me into His Spirit, and the Holy Ghost said no. And I left him alone. See, there's one thing about it: be sure your sin will find you out. It may not come out in a wash, but it's going to come out in a rinse. Be sure your sin will find you out.